It was my first time to see a seizure. I really did not know what to do. It really frightened me, but I tried to uh, maintain some semblance of calm so that the children would not become excited or scared to see the teacher, you know, uh, scared. I just had her on the floor and protected her head and just kind of rode the seizure out with her as the class was seated against the wall, just trying to explain to him a little bit about uh, what was happening. Seizure disorders, also known as epilepsy, appear in many different forms. About 300,000 children in this country have epilepsy. At one time or another, most educators will have a child with a seizure disorder in their class. A seizure is a brief disruptive discharge of electrical impulses in the brain. It may involve the whole brain or just a part of it. So anything the brain can do, people have to realize it can also do in the form of a seizure. That's why seizures can appear in so very many different forms. Seizures can be staring. Seizures can be movement. Seizures can be just a funny feeling in your hand. Seizures can also be the generalized tonic-clonic grand mal convulsions that people tend to think of. With regular use of medication, most children with epilepsy get reliable seizure control. However, it is always possible that a seizure may occur. That's why it's important to know how to recognize different types of seizures, how to provide first aid for a child having a seizure, how to make sure that child reaches his full academic potential, and how to promote self-esteem in that child and understanding by his peers. And a student who has a seizure disorder is first of all a person. And if you as a classroom teacher can incorporate acceptance, trust of this other human being, uh, compassion and love, that would be a very key part of your role as an early elementary teacher. Myths and misinformation about epilepsy create fear. Epilepsy is not a disease, nor dangerous to others in any way. It's not contagious. It's not a form of mental illness, nor mental retardation. The seizures most likely to be seen in school are absence, simple or complex partial, and generalized tonic-clonic. Teachers may be the first to notice that children are having absence seizures, sometimes called petit mal. In an absence seizure, generally the concept is that they're disconnected for a few moments. They're very likely to pick up exactly where they left off, but generally speaking, they do not know what is happening in that three, four, five second period of time. This girl has absence seizures, and you will see her have one while she's talking. Because he can be as heavy as ever, as ever. And there's a real blankness, a vacant look in the eye, and then all of a sudden they're right back with you and able to engage. Oh, pardon? Sorry? Absence seizures can be mistaken for daydreaming. One of the hallmarks of absence is that the seizures happen many times in a day. Sometimes they're so fleeting, they're easy to miss. This boy is having frequent but very brief episodes. You can see his eyes flutter up. He's out of touch. Then he becomes fully aware again. Absence seizures usually require no first aid. However, they should be reported if seen for the first time. Any information the child missed should be repeated. When you take your spelling test, tell me the things that you need to remember when you're giving your spelling test to your partner. I'll tell you who your partner's going to be in just a minute. But what are some of the things you need to remember? When and she was, she was giving instructions for something, and I just blanked out. And when I came back, she ha I guess she had said something to me because she was like, Jennifer, Jennifer. Because she, she didn't know what was going on. And so, I, I, and I didn't know what happened either. And I thought she was just ignoring me, you know, going through one of these stages that the children go through. And I thought she was just tuning me out when I was talking to her. And then we'd be watching for it, and then we got the teachers to watch for it, and slowly the pieces of the puzzle came together. Partial seizures involve only part of the brain. A child may experience changes in hearing, smell, and sight. She may have strong emotional sensations such as fear or anxiety. A part of the body may twitch uncontrollably. Complex partial seizures impair consciousness. They may create a variety of automatic movements or behaviors such as this girl is having. 
The child cannot control these movements. This girl's hand movements are automatic. She's not aware of them. They look like deliberate movements, but they're not. They're part of the seizure. Her awareness of her surroundings is clouded. They may seem to be sort of vacant, staring away, and then begins, they begin moving around, um, perhaps picking at clothes, wandering rather vacantly, um, sometimes pushing people away because they're essentially in a, a rather confused uh, kind of a state. Complex partial seizures last only a minute or two, though the child may feel confused for a while afterward. It's easy to mistake them for behavior problems. If restrained abruptly, the child may strike out in a reflex action, which may look like fighting. In managing these seizures, it's important to be calm, reassuring, and protect the child from harm. Gently directing uh, so that they don't go out the door down the stairs somewhere where they could be into trouble. Sometimes all it takes is, is being smart and closing the door um, and letting the youngster wander around the classroom. As the seizure ends, help the child get back in touch with his surroundings. The seizures most people think of when they hear the word epilepsy are generalized tonic-clonic seizures, often called grand mal, such as this little girl is beginning to have. They affect the whole brain and the entire body. The tonic phase is the stiffening of the muscles. Then the jerking movements begin, the clonic activity that you see here. A tonic-clonic seizure rarely lasts more than a few minutes. A person having one isn't conscious and won't remember what happened. The skin may become pale. Breathing may seem shallow or labored. Sometimes a child may lose bladder or bowel control or vomit as the seizure ends. These seizures may look painful or even life-threatening, but they are not. They end naturally after a minute or two. The chances of a child actually dying uh, in the midst of a seizure are very remote, very, very unusual. Uh, and I think it is not something that a teacher needs to be generally concerned about. It is exceptionally rare. A student in Keith Michael's PE class had a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. I wanted to make sure that the kids didn't get frightened, and that was the most important thing. I think that I got a hold of the situation, got them seated, and set the tone for them to relax and understand about not to panic. The basic role of the teacher is to keep the child safe. If he's sitting in a chair, you ease him to the floor so he doesn't fall to the floor. You move objects away from him that may um, cause him injury or hurt him while he's having a seizure, and then just be very supportive and be calm during the seizure. Once he's on the floor, turn the child on his side so that saliva runs forward and the airway is kept open. Loosen any clothing that may restrict breathing. Gently cradle his head in your hand or put something soft, such as a sweater, under his head. Do not hold him down or forcibly restrain him. This can cause injury. A persistent fear with these seizures is that the child will swallow his tongue. This simply is not true. The tongue is attached to the bottom of the mouth and can't be swallowed. Nothing should ever be forced into the mouth. Doing so will only break his teeth or cut his mouth. Usually, it's not necessary to call an ambulance for a tonic-clonic seizure, but there are a couple of exceptions. An ambulance should be called if the seizure lasts for longer than five minutes. If the seizure um, goes from one seizure into another without stopping or without this, the student regaining consciousness, or if there is no known history of seizures in that particular student. After a tonic-clonic or complex partial seizure, some children are confused, sleepy, or need time to rest. But others recover more quickly and can stay in class. Recognizing seizures and performing first aid are ways to physically manage epilepsy in school, but it's just as important to help with psychological or social effects. Often uh, such children are concerned that they're not seen as being different from their classmates. Um, they don't want to be seen as being sick, being disabled. If I was treated to like really differently like she was always like oh are you feeling okay oh do you want to go get a drink of water I'd feel like she was asking me everything too much because I mean I wouldn't be feeling that way and I wouldn't need that attention. The teacher would set the tone as to whether or not the 
child who had a seizure would be teased or made fun of or harassed in any way. And if the teacher is compassionate and caring, the children will be even more compassionate and more caring. Give the other students the opportunity to ask any questions that they might have, answer those questions as forthrightly as possible. I think if you're honest with them and just let them know and they know what's happening rather than in a gray area where they're just unsure and then they just kind of are scared of uncertainty. That you can uh, make things run smoother if you just are honest with them and let them know that. Helping the class understand epilepsy and accept the child with a seizure disorder often is made easier if the child wants to participate. You said that test before that they checked out, uh, he had ep epilepsy. Um, like, what does it do? They, what an EEG is, they put this glue, sometimes they put this glue stuff on my head and they stuck suction cups on it and I sat in the Seizures chair. can be controlled with medication in most youngsters with epilepsy. Some activities, such as swimming or climbing, will require extra supervision. But the entire school community can promote an inclusive attitude by encouraging a child to be involved in social and sports activities. One of the worst things that happens to children with seizures is the, is a concept of overprotection, making them into what we call a vulnerable child. They then begin to doubt their own abilities. I think the child should be able to participate in anything that they are able to participate in um, and that generally the fear of provoking a seizure by the routine kinds of activities a youngster would engage in is unfounded. Even when a child has severe and frequent seizures or other disabilities, participation in regular school life is still possible. And what we've done is taken the first grade program or the curriculum and worked Chris's tasks and his goals into their program. We could individualize, do everything in the class, especially like classroom, but it would not be giving him a complete education. He needs to be in with the first graders for the social behavior. Many children do well once seizures are under control, but epilepsy may still influence school performance in subtle ways. Seizures can affect memory, attention, or certain processing skills. It's a good idea to be reading the book that you've been assigned to read. You've got to Medication for seizures can also affect memory, slow down response time, or cause hyperactivity. Because of doctor's appointments and tests, lots of class time may be lost. So it's important for the teacher to be helpful in either providing tutors, a uh, fellow student can tutor the, the child with epilepsy, or um, such things as remedial work, work after school, or even summer school to help assist that student in getting caught up to the level of the other students. Changing medication, adapting learning strategies, and tutoring may help. However, academic problems may need a more intensive investigation. If you do suspect that a child in your classroom is having any kind of learning problems as a result of a seizure disorder, that child is entitled to have a complete evaluation, which would uh, entail a medical evaluation as well as a psychological assessment. And hopefully the results of that evaluation would determine whether or not special education services were needed, or if that was not necessary, what supportive educational techniques could be used right in the classroom with that student. There are many things that are important to the classroom teacher. One is that they need to recognize that their role may be very important in simply identifying that a child has seizures. I think they've got to realize that they need not be so afraid of seizures as they might have been raised to be. And I think, thirdly, they need to look at the child as a teacher should look at the child. How can I help that child grow, mature, learn?